The renders you're seeing are using a stupidly accurate film simulation, going as far as the tiny dye particles that make up the developed film. The colors should also behave exactly like the real thing. This is Portra 400, this Ektar 100. I've had this idea for a few months now, which to explain it further is to actually distribute the particles that make up the finished film and then just rendering them out like you're scanning real film. So real film is made up of tiny little particles, the ones I'm distributing on the plane right now, that get denser the more exposed the film was at that location. Which would almost be it if you were going for black and white film. But I want color. So the first thing is we have to use the opposite of the colors we want. Cyan for red, magenta for green and yellow for blue. Which getting that correct was relatively easy. The thing I want to do though is to accurately simulate how the film would react to the different colors and brightnesses. And to do that I'm going to use the characteristics and spectral sensitivity curves from the film's data sheet. I'm going to start with the characteristics curve. Initially I wondered why this turned the image either very blue or very orange. But after looking at references of real film negatives, that's exactly how they look. So that is accurate, which is nice. I did add a RGB curves node to balance the colors out somewhat, but that's not perfect. So it's best to do it in color grading. But after that, I'm good to work on the spectral sensitivity curves, which is going to have the biggest impact on the look of the final result and the representation of the film stock. They take a wavelength as input and convert them to the yellow, magenta and cyan or RGB values that the film would respond with. The problem with this approach is that yes, now I have a system that I can just plug wavelength into, but the conversion from RGB to wavelength, so taking the original image and preparing it for the curves is pretty inaccurate. So I'm searching for a better way to do this. I'm trying to snoop here on surrender a lot what he did because he kind of inspired this idea for me as well. Um, but I couldn't find anything, so still have to figure it out for myself. So after so much experimentation and trying around, this was really the by far the hardest thing to solve. I settled on passing the hue through a color ramp that converts it to the appropriate wavelength. I did have to make two slightly different color ramps because to display violet, we have to have blue and red visible at the same time, which wouldn't be possible with just one wavelength. Now, I thought only having the simulation that instances particles and actually simulates the grains is a little impractical. It takes a lot to render, it takes a lot of RAM. So I translated the thing over to the compositor as well. And by the way, I've picked up both of these systems, the one that actually instances particles and the one that works in the compositor into easy to use note groups, which you can check out with the link in the description if you want to have them. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So here is the final result. <laughs> 